Well, hey, Anatomy, hope you're doing well when you watch this video. So we're gonna start a new unit today, cardiovascular system, one of my favorite systems to talk about. The heart is amazing. Um, I'm also uh, more knowledgeable, I guess, about it than than uh, maybe just the average Joe, not only because I teach anatomy course, but also I've had lots of, um, I guess, heart kind of issues, you know, with regularities and stuff. And so I've seen some cardiologists and gone through some tests. So hopefully all that knowledge will help you be able to understand the heart a little bit better, okay? So today we're gonna to be talking about just kind of the first part, cardiovascular system. But before we get started, let's, let's do our biblical worldview. You know, let's talk about the heart from a biblical standpoint. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. If we were in class, I'd ask you some of the ways you guard your heart. But you guard your heart by, uh, you know, challenging yourself as far as what you put into your mind. Um, biblically speaking, the heart is not the organ necessarily that pumps inside your body. It's your it's your inner person. It's your kind of your essence, your soul. It's uh, you know, it it stands for like you when it says your heart. Heart occurs over 1,000 times in the Bible, making it the most common anthropological term in Scripture. It notes a person's center for both physical and emotional, intelligent, and intellectual and moral activities. It's used sometimes for any inaccessible thing. So Ezekiel 36, 26, God's talking, and it says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put in you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So in order to get a new heart, biblically speaking, God has to do it. God has to give us a heart transplant. And he's the only one that can give us a new heart. Psalm 51, the writer is crying, I create me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Philippians 4, 6, very, very applicable in the times we're living in right now. <laughs> do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So if you find yourself anxious or worried, Paul's saying, like, listen, give it to God. You know, pray about it, give it to him, and the peace of God will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. So I want you to do one part for me, um, part one of these questions. I want you to read 1 Samuel 16:7. I want you to explain what the verse means or teaches you about God. Okay, so that's question part one. So these are some of the objectives that we'll be discussing in these coming up videos. I'll try to highlight the specific one before each discussion, but you can kind of pause these and look these over if you so desire. Um, part one objectives, this lesson's part one. I want to help you describe the heart's location, shape, it's four chambers and the pulmonary and systemic circuits. You have different circuits running through your body right now. And then to describe the location and general features of the heart. This uh, snapshot is from a CDC website on heart disease. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men, women, and people in most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. One person dies every 30 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease. About 647,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. That's about one out of every four deaths. And you can pause the video here and kind of read over some of these facts. But heart disease is prevalent. Heart disease is taking away family members every single day. And it um, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's genetically influenced like everything, you know, usually is at least in a little bit of way, shape or form. But it can be preventable. Um, this is an amazing picture <laughs> about heart disease. So what it's showing here is the darker colored areas have higher rates of heart disease. I want to point something out to you. Where do you find most of the darkly colored areas? And if we were in class, I would kind of point this out, but that's the deep south. People consider Florida the south. I live in Florida. Florida is not really the south. Florida is a melting pot. The Deep South is Mississippi and Alabama, Tennessee, Louisiana. That's the Deep South. And so you might be tempted to think, well, everything is fried, of course, butter, cooking with butter. Yeah, that is true. But also sugar intake, sweet tea, right? Sweet tea on a, on a back porch swing. Sweet tea, right? Um, I grew up on sweet tea. My family um, came from a uh, more of a country-like place in Florida. 
And I grew up drinking sweet tea, but what science is showing us is that sweet tea and all this added sugar increases the risk of heart disease. And so questions part two is, I want you to tell me five ways the CDC, or it can be any you know scientific, scientifically based uh, website, Tell me what they say that will help someone lower their chances of developing heart disease. Five ways, that, what, uh, five things you can do to help lower your risk of getting heart disease, okay? So if the heart, uh, the heart keeps the blood in motion, if blood stops moving, supplies are exhausted, right? And I mean, of course, if you've seen movies or I've seen a couple of times people collapse, you know, in public, but the heart stops beating for a couple of minutes, it's not, you're dead, you know, that's why CPR is so important. We'll talk about CPR a little bit in today's lesson, but the heart beats about 100,000 times per day. That's about 70 beats per minute. You can take your heart rate if you want. Uh, never use your thumb because there's like a kind of a beat in your thumb. Um, always use two fingers. You can find there's different pulse points, radial side of the wrist. You can find a pulse point there, carotid artery in your neck. There's other pulse points that doctors will buy in your ankle, inner thigh. Um, but yeah, about 70 beats per minute. Some people are faster, some people are slower. Extreme athletes are like 50 zone beats per minute. It's like beat, beat. It's, 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 it's crazy to think about. The heart obviously pumps uh, 1.5 million gallons of blood per year. That's about 2.9 gallons per second. It is a fantastic machine inside of you. So where exactly is it located? Well, here's a picture right here. From Pearson and you can see that there's two different circuits in your body the heart is a two pump machine one side of it deals with one circuit and the other side deals with a different circuit so the right side is actually dealing with the pulmonary circuit pulmonary refers to lungs and so the right side deals with deoxygenated blood sending that blood to the lungs to get of course oxygen the left side of the heart is the systemic circuit which means the body and it deals with oxygen-rich blood. The strongest place of the heart, the, the place that has the most muscle, is the left ventricle. Why? Because that left ventricle it has to be the strongest to pump all that blood to the body. Arteries, veins, and capillaries are some terms you should be away, aware of. Arteries transport blood, A for away. Veins are going toward the heart. And capillaries are little small vessels that connect arteries and veins. You should be aware of those uh, three terminologies, three terms, I should say. So the cardiovascular system consists of heart and blood vessel. We'll be talking about all of that in the coming videos. Sends blood to the lungs and the digestive system for nutrients. Also circulates waste products to certain organ systems for removal from the blood, like, you know, the kidneys and also, some, you know, other organs. So the cardiovascular system consists, like, like we said, heart, blood vessels, and blood. And these systems have three main functions. So what are they? Transport. We're trying to transport nutrients, oxygen, and hormones to cells. We're also removing waste, carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste from the body. So where exactly is the heart? Well, here's the heart. There's some pictures I'm going to show you here. The heart's slightly left of the midline. So you can see the mid, mid sternal line right there. And it's slightly left to it. So if you put like a loose fist over your heart, not tight fist, but loose fist, that's roughly the size of your heart. Um, and you can see the, the picture here that's bordered by the lungs, laterally. Inferiorly is bordered by the diaphragm. Superiorly it has these aortas and superior vena cava. Um, and then, you know, uh, in front of it, you know, superficially, it has the sternum, which is obviously protects the heart. So, the, here's some other pictures here about where the heart is. You can kind of see where it's located as far as the ribs go. There's the sternum, um, body of the sternum, xiphoid process right there. You see that. This slide's very important, and I'll be showing you this slide multiple different times in the coming videos, but you should know de definitely a lot of terminologies about this. Um, if I were to give you a test in person, I would have had you label this, but it might be kind of hard to label, but I could do multiple choice online. But nonetheless, you should pretty much know most of these terms on this picture. This is a picture of the anterior uh, part of the heart. It's an anterior view. And you can see that here's the left ventricle. Let's just underline the major ones. Left ventricle, left atrium. Atria are collecting chambers. And, and uh, sorry about moving the screen there. And ventricles are pumping chambers. But you pretty much need to know all these different terms. And I'll be going through every single term pretty much as we go through these lessons. But there's just a little brief introduction to that. 
Um, so the heart, one more picture. You can see where the heart is related to the lungs. So because of its location, CPR is a possibility to save a life. I don't know if you, any of you have taken CPR courses, but CPR is as easy as CAB, compressions, airway, breathing. Now, if you're untrained, what they actually are recommending now is that you just hands only, hands only CPR, no rescue breaths. But if you're trained, they, they argue rescue breaths. I looked this up because sometimes, you know, science is always changing and things are always adjusting. But here's just how a CPR performed. You can pause the video here and read about it if you're wondering about it. But yeah, it's a great tool to, to have. I mean, if someone collapses in front of you and no one's CPR could save someone's life, save someone's um, dad or mother or grandparent. So it's good. Questions part three. So I want you to name the four chambers of the heart. I want you to compare the volume of blood each circuit receives from contraction of the ventricles, uh, each circuit, which means pulmonary or systemic. And then number three is describe the location of the heart in your own words. I want you to do that in your own words. So let's talk about a little bit more of the anatomy of the heart. The heart, like everything we've learned about in our bodies, is covered for protection. And so that covering is pericardium. It's kind of like if you had a balloon and put your fist in the balloon. There's space corresponding to the pericardial cavity, and then there's different uh, coverings on the heart. So there's two different ones that you should be aware of. Visceral which means directly on the organ. We talked about that in one of our first lessons and back, way all back in August. But directly on the heart, visceral, directly on the heart. Parietal is the layer on top of the visceral, and that's more on the organ while we would consider not directly on it. So you can see here the picture right here. You can see that the two layers of pericardium create like a little space, which would be like the space in the balloon in the previous picture. That's what it would create. So know of the differences between visceral and parietal pericardium. So here's just another picture here. Um, in another video, we'll talk about myocardium. Myo means muscle, but we'll talk about that in another video. So you have the parietal, which is on the outside, and the cavity, and then the visceral pericardium is right on the heart. Protective tissue protecting the heart. So pericardium is a sac-like structure wrapped around the heart. There's two different things, though, uh, conditions that could possibly influence the pericardium. Pericarditis, which is inflammation. Itis means inflammation of the pericardium. And cardiac tamponade, excess accumulation of pericardial fluid. So again, these are two conditions that possibly could influence how the pericardium protects the heart, and it possibly could lead to, in some rare cases, death. And so here's your last questions, part four for this introductory video. I want you to define mediastinum. What possible factors would cause someone to develop pericarditis? I want you to research that. Tell me, you know, maybe some infections or maybe some, uh, some sort of uh, immune system, you know, defense possibly. Uh, but you got to look that up. How could someone develop that? And then finally, number three, why can cardiac tamponade be a life-threatening condition. Okay, that's the question for the last part. So anyways, this is part one of the cardiovascular system. So many cool things to talk about the heart with you in, in future videos. Again, I hope you and your family are doing well, and I'll talk to you a little bit later.